Seven years after having started weaving, I get back to the subject of tubes, since this is a key issue for quality of woven items. So, how do I roll tubes today? Which technique have I developed seven years after I started, thanks to my constant search to the experience other weavers share and my own experience? I still do practice rolling tubes unsupported from time to time. I don't give up this method depending on where I am. Additionally, I've mastered the technique of rolling tubes lying on some surface. I've had lots of positive feedback from different weavers. Once I've got my finger cut a bit, I still felt like weaving but it hurt my injured finger. So, this little incident has made me familiar with this method and I still enjoy it. This technique has been recommended by quite a number of weavers. I will share the links to the ones who have inspired me in my comments. I've tried quite a lot of different surfaces. Let me share my conclusions. I'd like to remind what I mean by weaving unsupported. I take a knitting needle and roll a paper stripe round it. I do rather quickly, I used to enjoy the technique and I still apply it occasionally. It is what concerns weaving unsupported. Now let's consider weaving on surface. When I started trying this technique, the first challenge I faced was the type of surface to choose. I've tried different ones, read a lot of recommendations. I've tried weaving on plywood. Well, it is not bad, but I continued experimenting in search of a perfect surface. Then I've tried wrapping on a rigid surface with a food wrap. However, the foam used to slide and it left much to be desired as well. Finally, I found this old cotton board in the shed. In spite of its ugly look, this rough plastic seems to be a perfect surface for tube rolling. So I've tried it and it is the best option among all my experiments. So, how to weave on a surface? Place a knitting needle. As you already know, you should position it like this. Grab a corner, press it carefully. The rough and rigid surface prevents it from sliding. And roll the tube like this. The fingers are kept almost unengaged, which causes no blisters. Let's repeat once again. With the time you get used to the process and can avoid intermediate shifting. Let me show you the process once again on the example of a narrow stripe and thinner needle. It's high time to focus on such key points as stripe wideness and needle thickness. I've chosen the optimal stripe wideness by trial and error. I take an A3 sheet of paper 
and fold it into halves once and once again. As a result, I've got four stripes, ten and a half centimeters, about four inches wide. I find it comfortable to roll tubes round a needle, needle number either one or one and a half. I've developed the following rule for myself. I roll a 10 cm wide stripe round a 1.5 mm needle. If I take a narrow stripe, 7 cm wide, I roll it round a 1 mm thick needle. This is a ready item made of 7 cm wide stripes rolled round a 1 mm thick needle. A few more words on knitting needles. Before I got needles thin enough, I used to roll out thicker ones. This is an umbrella rib, about 1.8 mm thick. I measured its thickness with the help of an electronic caliper. This is a one and a half millimeter thick knitting needle. This is a one millimeter thick floral wire I've tried rolling on. Besides, I've taken a wise piece of advice on a Kirchner wire. Well, it was quite a challenge to find a one millimeter thick K wire. Finally, I found it, and I'm very happy with it and cherish it as an apple of my eye. It is rather flexible, rigid and smooth at the same time. I've been looking for something like this for quite a while. So, thanks a lot to all the viewers who share their experience. Let me show you the wire in close-up. It is flattened a bit from one end, but it doesn't matter for tube rolling. It is the way it looks. One end is sharpened, the opposite one is flattened. The surface is perfect for our purpose. It is easy to take out and it helps to roll tight tubes. One more note. To keep the board from sliding around the desk, I use such a rubber rug. First I tried to roll tubes directly on this rug, but it didn't work. It twists around the surface. However, as a base it is just perfect. You don't necessarily have to buy such a mat. You can use uh, any rubber base. So, here I've got a rubber base, a rough board, a 1 mm thick wire and a 7 cm wide paper stripe. I still make use of old newspapers. I've heard quite a number of different opinions on the use of newspapers, but I've got my own one. I believe newspapers are quite okay for our fancy work, especially for beginners who are not in the big market yet. Besides, if you weave a big laundry basket, for example, it can help you save much money. Just imagine how much paper you would have to buy. Now let me show you the way I make the process of tube rolling and surface faster. To avoid spending time on spreading glue on each stripe individually, I use the following trick, shared by some of the weavers. I'm quite satisfied with this trick. 
and maybe some of you will make use of it. Based on your own experience, you will see how many stripes to glue at a time to prevent the glue from drying. In my case, I glue about 10-12 stripes at a time. Take a stripe and roll it like this, tighten a tube up a bit if necessary. Take the next stripe, it has already been glued, roll and screw up if necessary. With the course of time you will get used to rolling tubes tight enough without necessity to screw them up extra. You just have to get used to the process. Both hands do matter. If you hold a wire with your right hand carefully, as a rule you can do without further tightening. If you glue too many stripes at a time, the glue can get dry by the time you come to the last one. So you define the optimal number of stripes to glue by way of trial. What are the benefits of this way of rolling? First of all, your fingers don't get tired at all. Moreover, you can still roll tubes even with an injured fingers, like in my case. Secondly, I have noticed that I am quite satisfied with the tube's tightness. Well, actually, I have mastered the way to roll tubes tight enough even unsupported. But anyway, this method of rolling on a surface allows rolling tight tubes as well. What I like most of all about this technique is that the roll at the end tube of the tube is rather short. I mean, the tube end I cannot make use of and have to cut off. When I roll tubes unsupported, the waist segment is much longer than in case of rolling tubes on the surface. Currently, I'm mastering the new technique – tube lengthening with overlap. Sometimes I can do without cutting the tube ends at all. This short segment of rolling gets hidden by the following tube, so I don't apply any glue and don't cut the ends. I'm now mastering the technique, trying my best to avoid any second joints, and I like the current result much more than I used to. This small basket has been woven with no glue at all. Well, it has not been finally treated yet, but still. Another point I'd like to draw your attention to is the material wetness. I tried keeping paper stripes in a freezer to make my family laugh. So, most of all, I like rolling tubes of stripes a bit wet. If the paper is too wet, it is inconvenient to roll too. One night spent in a freezer is quite enough. If your tubes are too dry and you have no time to prepare them, you can sprinkle some water to moisten them a bit. Be careful not to saturate the stripes with water, they have to be just a little bit wet. As well, recently I found the following piece of advice. Some weavers put a glass of water into the cabinet where they keep the paper stripes overnight. The next day they are wet enough and ready to roll. What I mean is, you are free to invent your own methods, how to roll tubes, prepare the material, which materials to use and so on. Good luck to all of you and thanks a lot to all the viewers who share their experience.